Hello and welcome to our Tuesday night live Bible study. I'm Andrew Womack and I'm here with Daniel Amstutz and uh, he's the head of our music department, our, what's the third year track called? Uh, School of Worship Arts. School of Worship Arts. Yeah. He does our healing school and we've been friends for a long time. Long time, yeah. How long do you remember? I believe 79 is the year we actually met. Wow. Yeah. You were a young guy back then. I know then. it, right? <laughs> we're just about the same age. Yeah, we are. He looks a little better than I do. How can your know. hair stay black? I know, it just does. I, I got. Are some... you sure you hadn't done anything? Yeah, no, I got some gray right. right here. Man, I was watching one of my programs the other day from 2000, and I had all brown hair then. I don't think I had any gray. Really? Yeah, it's amazing to watch the changes, isn't it? Well. <laughs> Anyway, we are here and we're going to have we a great time tonight. Yeah. And I've got some great things to share with you. I think it'll really encourage you. And Daniel is here to tell you about how you can get involved. We've got a giveaway. We've got things coming up. You can send questions. And so uh, anyway, yeah. Daniel, will just share with you. Yeah, you absolutely. So we, we are live. Amen. And uh, I tell you what, I saw a sign one time in a window in New Orleans that said live musicians. And I thought, well, you know what? That's probably a lot better than dead ones. <laughs> That's right. You aren't a dead musician. <laughs> no. And there's no dead Bible study happening Amen. tonight. Amen. Amen. We got a live Bible study. Hallelujah. So thank you for joining us wherever you are joining us from. We are just grateful that you're taking the time to be with us. Uh, as you know, this is our original Bible study on Tuesday night. This is where it all started. And uh, Andrew and Jamie really had in their heart to expand all of this when COVID, well, really right before COVID hit. So we now have daily Bible studies. What a blessing. And so Tuesday and Thursdays are at six o'clock and Monday and Friday are at 10 a.m. in the morning, and then Wednesday at bright and early at 7 a.m. So they're all different times, depending on your schedule. We wanted to vary it to be able to make it uh, usable for everybody and anybody. And we're live because you can ask us questions. So as Andrew's teaching tonight, there probably will be questions that will come up in your heart, like, man, I just wish I could sit at the table and ask him that. Well, put your question in the chat section and we're going to get to as many of those at the end of our live tonight as we possibly can. And those that we don't get to, uh, we do have a Tuesday roundup at 1.30 that Barry Bennett usually uh, answers additional questions. And that's always a blessing as well. So as Andrew said, uh, this Tuesday night Bible study is kind of special because if you go to awmi.net forward slash study, you can actually get the notes next Monday from tonight's teaching. And that is a blessing. You're going to definitely want to get those. And if you register there, you'll also be entered into a drawing a giveaway. And last week we gave away the true nature of God and Louise Zumbrunen was the winner. So congratulations, Louise. And tonight we're giving away lessons from David by Andrew and it's a signed copy. So I'm telling you, it'll be a real blessing. So go to that page, awmi.net forward slash study. And if you haven't yet registered, do that and that will get you in for the drawing. Also real quickly, we've got some great events coming up. We've always got great events throughout the entire year. There are multiple things happening. So if you ever wonder, you can go to awmi.net forward slash events and see everything that's going on there. We are also live because we have a prayer center that's open now 24 hours a day, seven days a week. So if you have a prayer request, you want someone to pray with you, agree with you, uh, Andrew can tell you, you know, we've been seeing breakthroughs in our prayer center for years, but it's like everything has just gotten ramped up. God is so good. And there's so many breakthroughs and, and things happening uh, in people's lives that are supernatural. And we know it's the word of God that's working on their behalf. So get somebody to pray with you. The Bible says that the prayer of a righteous man avails much. And when we believe and receive, when we pray, I'm telling you, big things happen. Our prayer center is open 24 hours a day, seven days a week now. So no matter what time zone you're in, there will be someone who will be available to take your call. And then I also want to encourage you, if you have not yet partnered with this ministry, man, I want to encourage you to become a giver, become a partner. Uh, it's, it's great to have a one-time offering, but it's even better to have a partnership to where we can do bigger and greater things than we would ever be able to do with a one-time. We appreciate everything that's given. But those of you who are partners, thank 
you for partnering. Those of you who are not yet, I want to encourage you to become a partner. And again, you can go to awmi.net forward slash give, and you can get all the information there that you need to be a, a, a blessing. And uh, again, thank you for taking the time to be with us tonight. We are grateful for you. And we know that you are going to be blessed as a result of the word and, of course, the revelation that Andrew carries. And, Andrew, we talked about this last week, but this year, I believe, marks 54 years of ministry for you, right? Mm -hmm. It's nearly 55 in March. In March. That's incredible. And when I think of how many books you've written and the influence in so many lives, including mine, uh, man, it's just such a blessing, Andrew. Thank you for all that you're doing. A blessing is all mine. Amen. I'm glad I didn't quit. I am too. <laughs> because man, if I'd have quit when things were hard, I would have missed all of the great things God's doing now. And you know what? When they were hard in that season, you had every reason to quit, didn't you? Well, I mean, you could have yes. so easily. I had a lot of people come along and, and what hurt probably more than anything wasn't the people that were critical. It was the people who loved me. Yeah. They came along and said, you know, you're really a great guy. We love you, but boy, you need to find something else to do. It's not working. Wow. <laughs> that was harder to that's deal like, with. That's like Job's friends. Yeah, it was right? harder to deal with than the real criticism. Yeah, I know that's right. And so tonight I'm going to be talking about uh, the effects of praise. Oh, I have good. a teaching on yes. this. It's a three-part teaching. And uh, the reason I'm doing this is because Thanksgiving's coming up. And I'm aware that there's a difference between praise and thanksgiving, technically. Sure. But yeah. you can't give praise without being thankful. That's right. You can't be thankful without giving praise. It's true. And so I I'm going to uh, relate it to Thanksgiving. Nice. I heard you say one time when we had the third year presentations, you got up and everybody was promoting, you know, their business school and ministry school. And you got up mm. and said, my ministry is the only one that's going to continue <laughs> on in inter eternity, praise God. Right? So that's pretty good. We know that goes all the way up in heaven. Yeah. <laughs> and so, you know, when you're praising God, you're doing something that we're going to be doing in heaven. Yeah. So much of what we do down here, even church and things like that, you know, mm. we aren't going to have that in heaven. But praise, man, mm. it is going to be awesome. It is. Wow. Have you ever heard praise from heaven? You know, I heard, I'm so glad you asked me that because one time somebody back in the early 80s handed me a cassette and it was supposedly somebody who captured that, the sound yeah, of heaven. I've heard that. Yeah. And you all didn't it, care for it. All it was was just this homogenous sound from a synthesizer. <laughs> but anyway, I had a dream one time and I have real vivid dreams and yeah. I actually was in heaven and heard the praise and I don't know how to describe it, but it's not there's notes that we don't have. There's yeah. things that we don't have. It's just, it's going to sure be, that's true. it's going to be awesome. It's going to be incredible. I think we'll be able to hear things and that yeah. we haven't heard. But anyway, I just want to share with you about how important it is. And the reason I'm doing this is because of Thanksgiving. You know, we're just a couple of days, we're going to be doing that. And I think that Thanksgiving is actually the most godly holiday that we have. Mm. Because so many of the holidays like Christmas, again, I'm not against Christmas, but Christmas has been so commercialized. So many people, you know, they commit more suicide during Christmas season than anything else because everybody's talking about peace on earth and mm -hmm. joy and all of this, and they don't experience it. And it just makes the contrast worse. Mm -hmm. And so anyway... Uh, we've gotten into Santa Claus and gifts and all kinds of things. And Easter, we have a rabbit that lays eggs. Oh I have goodness. no idea where that came from. <laughs> and then we have um, Halloween, which is supposed to be the uh, the uh, All Saints Day where you praise God for all of the people that have gone before us. And so the evening before, the hallowed evening before, mm -hmm. they've turned it into witches and goblins. So nearly every holiday has mm -hmm. been... Uh, you know, taken over. Mm -hmm. But Thanksgiving is just a holiday that was started for no other purpose except to give thanks. Wow, so great. And it wasn't during times that everything was great. The original yeah. pilgrims lost over half of their people during the very first winter. Mm. And when they came to the fall and they had a good crop and stuff, they were giving thanks. But they had lost half. Nearly every person there had lost somebody in their family. Mm -hmm. Did you know uh, Abraham Lincoln, there were uh, Thanksgiving observations before Lincoln's time, but Lincoln is the one who made it a national holiday. And his 1863 proclamation that he gave talked about that we have been the recipients of the most uh, 
you know, great blessings of heaven and, mm. and our crops have brought forth. And they were in the midst of a civil war. Mm. Over 635,000 Americans died. Wow. That's more than all of the wars that America has been involved in added together. And most people believe that that was way underreported. It's probably over 700,000. That's incredible. And so in the midst of a terrible situation, he mm. gave a proclamation, let's thank God. Mm. So I just want to present this, that Thanksgiving is not optional. I would say that the majority of people think that, well, if everything was good, yeah, I'll say thanks. But you're missing something. Thanksgiving is not the caboose. It's actually the engine. Mm -hmm. If you will learn to give thanks and praise God, even when things are bad, it says over in Colossians chapter 2, verse 6, it says, As ye have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk ye in Him. Mm -hmm. And then verse 7 says, Rooted and built up in Him and uh, uh, established in the faith as you have been taught, abounding therein. That's talking about abounding with, in faith with thanksgiving. Your thanksgiving makes your faith go to another level because what you're doing, instead of looking at the problem and saying, I'm using my faith in this uh, physical problem, this financial problem, relational problem is going to change. What you're doing, you have to look past that and get into faith and start thanking God before mm. you see things. And man, I, the Bible is just full of this. Second Chronicles chapter 20 is Jehoshaphat who sent the singers out. Wouldn't you have mm -hmm. liked to have been his praise and oh, worship man. leader? <laughs> right? Three armies coming against you. And yes. instead of sending the soldiers, he sent the singers out. Yeah. And as they begin to praise God, then God set ambushes and two of the armies, there was three armies, and two of them joined together to kill one. They thought that the booty would be greater. They'd mm -hmm. just eliminate one of the partners. Mm -hmm. And then they turned on each other. Mm -hmm. And when Jehoshaphat's army got over the hill and looked, all three armies were dead to the last person. It took them three days to gather up the spoil. Man, That's amazing. what praise will do. That's right. But man, could you imagine being going out to fight a battle mm -hmm. and you got all of your praise groups. Worship leaders <laughs> out front. Yeah, that's when you know you're committed. That's right. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> right? So anyway, we could go on and on about the, what praise has done, but let me just read this to you out of Psalms 100. It says, Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Mm. Come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. Amen. It is he that hath made us, and not we ourselves. We are this people and the sheep of his pasture. And then it says, Enter into his gates with thanksgiving, and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him, and bless his name. For the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting, mm -hmm. and his truth endureth to all generations. Amen. Again, I could literally spend hours on, on multiple verses here, but it says, Enter into his gates with thanksgiving, and into mm -hmm. his courts with praise. Mm -hmm. This is how we're supposed to enter. And yet most people, when they have problems, they just come before God and it's like they just throw up mm -hmm. on Him. All, they just pour out all of their hurts and all of their pains. And there's a place for us to let our requests be known to God. But let me turn over and read this verse out of Philemon, or excuse me, it's uh, Philippians chapter 4. And it says in verse 4, it says, Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say rejoice. Let your moderation be known unto all men. The Lord is at hand. Be careful for nothing. The word careful, man, this just means don't take the care. Don't worry about stuff. You've got a father that loves you. Over in 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 7, casting mm -hmm. all of your care upon him because he cares for you. Mm -hmm. This is how you can tell whether or not you're operating in faith or not. If you're worried and bothered, mm -hmm. if you're just fixated on what can I do to overcome this problem, yeah. you haven't cast your care over on the Lord. And so this says, be careful for nothing but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. This is a command that we are supposed, well, put it together with Psalms 100. We're supposed to enter his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. And then we're supposed to let our requests be made known unto God mm -hmm. with thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. Again, if you're coming to the Lord and just pouring out your heart and telling Him how bad everything is, God loves us. God wants us to cast our care on Him. So I'm not saying that that's 
wrong to do, but it's wrong to do if you don't start with entering in, into his courts with praise. And if you just put your petition before God and you don't thank him by faith that God, I know you love me and regardless of what this is, it's going to work out. You know, I've got a pass that I uh, walked from my house over to here and uh, I named it, It Came to Pass. And I just put a sign up there, It Came to Pass, 8930 is the altitude. And then underneath it says, that's the reason it came, so it could pass. <laughs> Dave Duell, that was one of his sayings. Yeah. You used to be worship leader with him. I sure did. And anyway, yeah. you've got to, when you make a petition to God, you got to just have this attitude. God, mm -hmm. it doesn't matter what weapon is formed against me. It's yeah. not going to prosper. I'm going to make it. Amen. Even if it's cancer or whatever you're fighting, you know, God can heal it. I've seen lots of cancer heal. Mm -hmm. Nothing is impossible with God. And if for some reason you do not see the manifestation, you're going to go to be with the Lord in heaven. We sing songs about when we all get to heaven, what a day that will be. And then the doctor tells you you're going and you start crying. <laughs> Something's wrong with that. So really, you need to just have this thing that, God, I'm going to praise you. I don't care if they slit my throat with a brand new knife. I'm going to say, praise God, Come it was on. brand new. It didn't have any rust on it. <laughs> I won't get any infection. That's right. So you, just, you can find something to praise God about. Sure I don't can. care what's going on. And this says, with thanksgiving, you let your request be made known unto God. I could just continue to amplify on this over in uh, 2 Timothy chapter 3. One of the 19 things that are listed as signs of the end time is that people will be unthankful. Mm -hmm. And I tell you, we're living in that time. Oh, man. Unthankfulness makes you focus your attention on the negative, and it makes you use your imagination mm -hmm. to worry and see the worst case right. scenario. Thankfulness forces you to look past your problem and focus on God and use your imagination to see yourself healed, mm -hmm. prosperous, delivered, or whatever. Mm -hmm. I tell you, that is really important. You know, I, I remember going to the zoo and looking through a 35 millimeter camera where you focused, you know, through the lens mm -hmm. and you could focus on an animal. And if you focused on them, the chain link fence just disappeared. It's yep. like it wasn't even there. Yep. Or you could focus on the fence and the animal would disappear. Yeah. It all depends on where your focus is. And see, praise and thanksgiving makes you focus on God. Because if you say, I'm going to enter his gates with thanksgiving, well, then you aren't going to come before him saying, God, thank you that I'm dying. Thank you that my friend died of this same thing. I can see, that. see that's not Thanksgiving. For you to thank God, you got to get your mind off of the problem and you got to start saying, Father, thank you. Just like Jesus said in the sixth chapter of the book of Matthew, our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Yes. He starts by worshiping the Lord. And then you slip in, give us this day our daily bread. And then you end it with, for thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever. It starts and it ends with praise. And see, if this is the attitude, if we understood how important mm -hmm. thanksgiving and praise is, wow. and if we truly came into his presence and exited his presence with praise and thanksgiving. What it would do, it would make you focus beyond your problem. It would make you look at God, recognize he's got an answer for every problem that you've got, and it would just shrink and diminish your problem down to nothing. Mm -hmm. Again, that verse I've already used, Colossians 2, 7, says you abound in faith with thanksgiving. And so when you are giving thanks is when your faith is the highest. If you are not thanking God, your faith is incomplete. Your faith is immature. You know, if, I, if you were praying for a million dollars and I came up and said, here's a million dollars and gave it to you, I guarantee you there would be some form of thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. Now, some people express themselves differently. Mm -hmm. I'm the kind that when I get blessed, it just, I just freeze like mm -hmm. I'm overwhelmed mm -hmm. and I cry a lot. Mm -hmm. Most people think I'm beyond that, but mm -hmm. I'm a very sensitive person. I cried <laughs> at uh, 101 Dalmatians when they were going to kill all of those. Anyway, I am a sensitive guy. So my, my response would be kind of quiet mm -hmm. or I might get tears in my eyes. Some people will shout and run and sure. jump. Other people would faint. Some people mm -hmm. would, who, who knows what they do. Yeah. But you can't imagine seeing the end result of what you're praying for without some manifestation of thanksgiving mm -hmm. and praise. Yep. So if you are praying for something 
and you haven't operated in thanksgiving and praise, then your faith isn't complete. Mm -hmm. What we've got to do is to operate in faith and go beyond just what we see and what we feel, mm -hmm. and we start praising God as if it's already done. Yeah. That's right. Going back to Jehoshaphat, he sent the singers out mm -hmm. in front because there was a prophet that came and says, you aren't going to need to fight in this battle. Mm -hmm. He says, you know, set yourself because you won't have to fight. They didn't know exactly what was going to happen, but they believed it enough that yeah. they didn't put the soldiers out front. They put the praisers out there like what God said was true. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Wow. Wouldn't that be unusual if when God says it by your stripes, you were healed? Mm-hmm. Wouldn't it be unusual if people really believed that and didn't wait until the pain was gone, until the doctor verified it, but they just started rejoicing as if it was already done? That's what faith is. Mm -hmm. And praise and thanksgiving will make you do this. You know, I'm, this is a real brief introduction, but let me just say that this series that I've got, and you can call our helpline at 719-635-1111, we got people on the phones 24-7. And if you called and asked for the effects of praise, it's a teaching that I have. It's in book form, CD, and DVD. And anyway, it makes three points about how praise and thanksgiving affects you. That's what I've been talking about. Then it talks about how it affects the devil. And I really hadn't gotten into that, but in the 21st chapter of Matthew, Jesus quoted from Psalms chapter 8, verse 2, and he, when he was criticized and the Pharisees came and said, stop your disciples from praising you because they were throwing their garments in the way and saying, Hosanna to the high, in the highest. And they, they were jealous. I tell you, every time you go to thanking God, people that don't have that heart will criticize mm -hmm. you. So true. And so anyway, they said, stop your disciples. And he said, haven't you ever read? Out of the mouth of babes and sucklings thou hast ordained praise. That's what he said in Matthew 21. But if you go back to Psalms 8, 2, where he was quoting from, it says, Out of the mouth of babes and sucklings thou hast ordained strength. Mm -hmm. And it goes on to say, Because of thine enemies, that thou mightest still the enemy and the avenger. So if you put those two scriptures together, they don't contradict each other. What it's saying is that praise is strength mm -hmm. to still the enemy and the avenger. Amen. So here's how praise affects the devil. Satan's uh, transgression against God in Isaiah chapter 14, he said, I will be like the Most High. I will exalt my throne above the sides of the north. Mm -hmm. I will sit on the throne of God. He wasn't, he didn't hate God. He envied God and wanted all of the praise and worship that was going towards God to come to himself. Mm -hmm. So he is an egomaniac. And when people start giving praise and thanksgiving to God, mm. Satan can't stand it. Mm. There's many examples of praise just drives off demons. It brings the anointing of God. So praise affects you. It, it affects your focus. It puts you into your highest form of faith. Praise affects the devil and drives him away. This is the reason that when we have a service, we always start with praise and worship. Yeah, that's right. It's not just a tradition, but mm -hmm. man, when we, what it does, when you start praising God, people come in and they've had a rough day. Yep. Terrible things happen, and it focuses their attention on God, mm -hmm. and it glorifies God. He inhabits the praises of His people, yep. and it drives off the devil. And yeah. it's just like plowing the ground, so we it's, can put it's the awesome, seed in isn't it? Yeah, it's what a awesome. deal! And you got great praise and worship. Amen. We got the best. Amen. You've done a great job. Daniel. Thank you, Andrew. So praise affects you, your focus. It affects the devil, drives him away, and. Here's one that most people don't know, but did you know praise affects God? Yeah, it blesses Him. And most people don't understand that. They think God doesn't need anything. Yes, He does. It says in Revelation chapter 4, verse 11, it's talking about the 24 elders and the four living creatures before the throne. And it says that they say, uh, Thou art worthy, O Lord, be, and, uh, to receive glory and honor and power, for Thou hast created all things, and for Thy pleasure they are and were created. Mm -hmm. Notice the wording. They are and were. In other words, the original purpose of God creating everything was for His pleasure. Mm -hmm. And because of the fall of man, a lot of things have changed. Did you know that the church is actually a byproduct of the fall? Mm -hmm. if, if everybody was still perfect, we wouldn't have a church. Mm -hmm. Government, money, 
uh, on and on you can go with a lot of things that are essential and in their place are just fine, but they're still a result of the fall. Wow. But something that was in place before there was sin was that we were created for His pleasure. That's what we were and are created for. Mm -hmm. So what I'm saying here is that God created us for fellowship. He loves us. Mm -hmm. God is love. And anybody who loves has a need for that love to be reciprocated, mm -hmm. given back to him. So when you start praising God, it says in uh, Psalms 22, 3, that God inhabits the praises of his people. Zephaniah three seventeen, he twirls and dances mm -hmm. over us mm -hmm. with joy. Amen. When you, when you start thanking God, and it doesn't have to be for something earth shaking, mm -hmm. but just thank him that, man, praise God, things are as good as they are. They could be worse. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's right. You know, I've been studying a lot about the Civil War, and as bad as things are in our woke society and things that are happening, did you know the Civil War was really bad? Mm. It was worse, mm. and it looked like we were going to lose this nation. I mean, we're better off now than we mm. were back then. Sure. And we could praise God that things are as good as they are. It could yeah. be worse. Yeah. And so when you start praising God and just thanking Him for how good things are, mm -hmm. did you know that blesses God? Amen. Psalms 34, 1, bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless His holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all His benefits. Mm -hmm. Man, that is awesome. It really is. That was Psalms 103. 103, yeah. It. Psalms 34 says, I will bless the Lord at all times. Yeah. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. There's just a lot of scriptures about blessing the Lord. There really are. But when it says bless the Lord, that doesn't mean that you're going, bless the Lord, bless the Lord. But what you're doing mm -hmm. is when you love Him, mm -hmm. when you thank Him, that blesses God. Yeah. I don't think most people understand that. You know, it says in uh, Acts chapter 13, verse 2, that Paul and Silas and others, as they fasted and prayed and mm -hmm. ministered to the Lord. To the Lord, yeah. How do you minister to the Lord? Mm -hmm. You know what you do? You just say, thank you. Father, I love you. And wow. that ministers to God. Mm. And I promise you, God is a giver. God so loved the world that he gave. Yeah. He's never going to let you out give him. And when you start giving him thanks and honor and glory, it blesses him. And I guarantee you, he is going to bless your socks off. Mm -hmm. But on the other hand, there's a lot of people that when they come before the Lord, it's not about, they never worship the Lord. They never bless the Lord. They use God like a grocery cart to go up and down the aisles of heaven and give me this and mm -hmm. give me that. Mm -hmm. And God loves us and God is big enough to look beyond some of those things. But I tell you, it really touches the heart of God mm -hmm. when somebody is just thankful. And so, again, I've just scratched the surface on this. I've got that teaching entitled The Effects of Praise in book, CD, or DVD. And you can call our helpline. And if you want that, they'll get it to you. And it's also a free download on our website, mm -hmm. and I think it would be a real blessing to you. So I just wanted to say that during Thanksgiving, go out of your way to just be thankful. We've got a lot to be thankful for. Yes, we do. You know, my son, uh, Jonathan Peter, was raised from the dead, mm -hmm. and sometimes he's a pain. I don't mean that bad, mm -hmm. but... <laughs> he's a kid. Well, right? he's I mean, a 40 something he's year old a, kid. Yeah, but anyway, adult kid. <laughs> but anyway, there's times that things aren't exactly the way they're supposed sure, to be. And sure. sometimes he, he razzes me. But you know, I was sitting there one time as he was just saying some things about me that didn't bless me. And I was just looking at him and thinking, thank you, Jesus, that he's alive to do right? this because he man. could have been dead. He was dead for five hours. Yeah. And I just sit there and it's not perfect, but I was thinking, yep. praise God yeah. that Amen. he's here. Amen. And you know what? Every person, when we come together for Thanksgiving, it's not always good. Sure. Yeah. Some of us have family members that, man, yeah. praise God Challenge. for our born again family. Yeah, that's right. Uh, but nonetheless, you ought to be praising God that you've got a family. Yeah. You ought to be praising God. So just go out of your way during Thanksgiving season to make sure that you spend time thanking God That's and awesome, don't make it just a Thanksgiving thing. Make it something you do all the time. Would you say that Thanksgiving then changes your perspective? Absolutely. It's a, it's That's what I'm saying. It changes your focus is yeah. the word I was using, but same yeah. thing. Yeah. Your perspective, once that changes, then that changes everything. Absolutely. Now you're seeing differently. I remember when interest rates back during Carter, when he was president, it was yeah. over 20%. 
Mm -hmm. And people were just freaking out. Mm -hmm. And the Lord gave me a scripture that he's laid up the wealth of the wicked for the righteous. Yeah. And I thought, you know what's happening? This is a transfer of finances. Wow. And the ungodly who are leveraged to the hilt are losing it. But man, the godly are going to receive it. And because of that perspective, mm -hmm. see, because I was giving thanks, mm -hmm. instead of getting bothered by it, I was excited. And That's sure awesome. enough, our ministry began to grow and good things happened. Yeah. And so, so it's all are. about your perspective. Yeah, that's right. You know, when you said Revelation 4.11 about how we are created for his pleasure, it hit me, Andrew, tonight that in 2 Timothy, when Paul was warning uh, Timothy, he said they're going to be lovers of pleasure rather right. than lovers of God right. in the end times. Mm -hmm. And you think about how we were created to give God pleasure, to bless the Lord, right? Yeah. That's incredible. And the very first thing in that list, it says they will be lovers of their own selves. Their That's own what selves. leads them to pleasure because it's all just like they're a vacuum sweeper, just sucking everything yep. towards Self-centered. But we're supposed to be giving to God. Mm -hmm. It's in losing your life that you really find what life's all about. Amen. Wow. That's awesome. So good, isn't it? Praise God. We've got several questions, so let's get to some of these. Uh, Andrew, you really addressed this, I think, in your teaching, but Denise asked on Facebook, what's the difference between praise and worship? You know, I'm not sure that I could totally define that. Uh, you're talking about praise and thanksgiving and, and or praise worship. and worship? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, you know, I say this to you a lot. I'm more of a worshiper than yeah. I am a praiser. You're more of a praiser. Yeah. Now, you do both, and yeah. I do both. Mm -hmm. But Daniel, when you come to our thing, man, he's mm -hmm. all into rah, rah, rah. High energy. Yeah. Thanksgiving, celebration. I'm all into yeah. God. I love you. Yeah, and I now, love you. I do too. both. Mm -hmm. You do both. Yeah, you do. But I would say that's the difference between praise and worship. Praise can be ecstatic, it can mm -hmm. be joyful. Whereas worship, uh, matter of fact, you probably know this, but in the Hebrew, I think it is, the word for worship literally means to kiss the face. Yeah, it does. Yeah. And so this is intimacy. Worship yeah. is intimacy it's, where right. praise and worship may not be intimate. You right. might be, somebody gave you a thousand dollars and you're just and praising you God, or whatever. Yeah. but you aren't necessarily worshiping the Lord. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That's great. Can you add to that? Well, I think that's great. You know, in, in today's modern uh, contemporary worship ministries around the world, most people would actually think of worship as a general category. In other words, we have worship ministry, and within that is, is all of these components, you know. But I agree, according to the biblical definitions, the, the word for worship really expresses intimacy. You know, I, ha I keep a journal, and when I write in it, it's got grammar corrections, and I say something about the praise and worship, and I say the praise and worship was great. And it always says, no, praise and worship were great because uh, they look at them as separate things, but I look at it as one thing. I do too. Isn't and so I'm always having to correct my grammar because <laughs> I see praise and worship as one thing. They, they need an update from That's you. That's right. They ought to listen to my teaching. <laughs> Princess Bell on Facebook says, if we pray in tongues, do we still praise God in the natural? I'd say yes. Yeah. Uh, matter of fact, there's a scripture, I forgot the wording of it right now. I, oh, Paul said, I will um, pray with my understanding and yeah, I will pray, pray in, the in the Spirit. First mm -hmm. uh, Corinthians chapter 14. Mm -hmm. So you do both. Yeah. I think that praying in tongues is actually probably a higher form of worship, but you don't know what you're saying right. and it says that you don't get edified. So you need to also pray in your known language. Yeah so that you are receiving benefit from That's it. That's right. Yeah. Your understanding is unfruitful, mm -hmm. but you, your, your spirit is edified. Yeah. 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 Um, guest on email says, what did the pilgrims not like about the Church of England? What was the big thing with, you know? <laughs> what didn't? What well, they didn't. They, I didn't just they read like. about this yesterday, I think it was. And at the time the pilgrims came over, anybody who criticized the Church of England in any doctrine, they would take you and they would put a brand on your forehead that oh, wow. was SL. Wow. In big letters, SL for seditious libel. Wow. 
And they would also many times put people in prison and leave them there. And they sometimes killed people. Mm. And they tortured them and did all kinds of things just because they decided that they weren't going to follow every precept. And if they spoke against anything, that's what was happening. So there was physical persecution mm. uh, as well as they were taking, uh, you know, lands away from people, confiscating things. A lot of the things that we see happening in this nation where they're intimidating you and saying mm -hmm. that you're going to be fired if you do this. Mm -hmm. So there was a lot of persecution. Wow. And they came over here because uh, they were desiring to worship God the way they chose. Mm -hmm. And you know, one of the key factors to that was the Geneva Bible. Mm -hmm. It had just come out. And prior to that time, the average Christian didn't know what the Bible said. They just depended upon the church to tell them. Well, sure. And when the Geneva Bible came wow. out and people started reading it, they were breaking away from this liturgical stuff that Henry VIII put in place that's on the Church amazing. of England. And that's that's what really birthed all of this was wow. the translation of the Bible into English. And that's something. That's awesome. incredible. We have that to be thankful for. I mean, think about Amen. what a huge influence Amen. that's made on our lives. You know, if a person says, I hadn't got anything to praise God for. Man. Well, first of all, you're alive. Right. You're vertical. You're, you're, you aren't dead. So you're everything breathing. that hath breath, praise yeah. the Lord. Yeah. If you've got the baptism of the Holy Spirit, you've got access to power. You may not be using it, but you've got access. You've got the Bible. Yep. We've got on and on you could go. Mm -hmm. Man, we've just got so much to be thankful for. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Princess Bell on Facebook says, can you explain more how praise defeats the devil and how long do we need to praise God for that to happen? Well, you have to do it as long as it takes. <laughs> That's really it, isn't it? I mean, Again, if you if you only praise God because you're out to defeat the devil and right. if that's what you're doing, you aren't really worshiping God. Mm -hmm. For instance, in the 16th chapter of the book of Acts, Paul and Silas were thrown in prison. Their backs were beaten. Yep. Their feet and hands were in a stock. It was a terrible situation, but at midnight, they begin to praise God. Yep. Now, it is true that when you praise God, that drives the devil away. I believe God got to patent his foot to <laughs> the music. On. <laughs> and an earthquake came and it opened up all of the prison doors and every single prisoner was set free. Mm -hmm. But here's, this is important. You could say that they did that fighting against the devil, fighting against discouragement, fighting against things. Mm -hmm. And that, it's probably true that that was part of it. But when they were set free, they didn't leave mm -hmm. because they didn't do it just to get free. That's right. They did it because they really loved God. Even yes. when their backs were wow. hurting, they really loved God. So I'd say to Princess Bell that yes, you praising God drives the devil away and you need to be aware of that and use it as a weapon, but you have to go beyond that. Mm -hmm. It's not just praising God so you can get something. Mm -hmm. You need to get to where you praise God because you really love Him and you really thank Him. And if the things never changed, you mm -hmm. would still praise Him. And when your heart gets pure like that, I guarantee you that's when the real power of praise and thanksgiving comes yeah. out. Yeah, God's worthy. Amen. No matter All what. of the time. Yeah. Even if your life is a total wreck, you mm -hmm. ought to praise God that He loves a person that's a total wreck like mm -hmm. you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right? Amen. And I tell you what, <laughs> Kelly uh, on Facebook says, can you help me understand how to cast your care on the Lord and uh, how to actively resist the devil and speak to the mountain at the same time? Well, that's out of 1 Peter chapter 5, and in verse 5 it says, Humble yourselves therefore under the mighty hand of God, that He may lift you up, uh, and be subject one to another. And be, Go back to that verse, if you would, please. Yea, all of you be subject one to another, and be clothed with humility, for God resisteth the proud, and giveth grace to the humble. And then the next verse says, Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that He may exalt you in due time. Now, most people just stop right there, but the seventh verse says, mm -hmm. casting all of your care upon Him because He careth for you. Right. And they don't realize that these are not separate thoughts. They're connected. So I, could say, I can say a lot of things about that, but I can say that if you are anxious, worried, careful, and you're worried and you're staying up at night, God, what am I going to do? How do I get out of this? You haven't humbled yourself because that's the context. Humble yourself, casting all your care upon the Lord. The way you humble yourself is by casting your care. If you're still holding on to it and saying, it's my responsibility, what do I have to do? 
you haven't totally humbled yourself. Mm -hmm. Humility isn't talking about being base, being weak. It's talking about being God dependent. Now you can define humility in a lot of different ways, but it is literally when you are taking all of the responsibility upon yourself. But when you cast your care over on the Lord and say, God, this is your problem. Mm -hmm. I'm your child. I'm doing to the best of my ability what you've told me to do. It's your problem. Mm -hmm. I've got a little cartoon mm -hmm. that we have on our refrigerator and it shows a guy laying in bed and his eyes are bloodshot and you can tell <laughs> he can't sleep. And out of heaven, you know those little caption things? Mm -hmm. Out of heaven comes a word from God and he says, my child, go to sleep. I'm going to go be up all night anyway. <laughs> that's awesome. And I thought, man, that's really good. I you love know? that. But we, we just feel like we've got to do something. Yeah. No, God's got to do something. Yeah. And there's a lot of things involved in that. You can't be doing your own thing and then have that kind of peace. But if you are really seeking God and if you cast your care over on the Lord, that's the way it should be. So. Mm -hmm. that's anyway, so I've got a lot more on that. I've got a teaching entitled Self-Centeredness the source of all grief. It's yeah. a little tidy pamphlet. So powerful. And I tell you, it's one of the best teachings I've got. Yeah. Well, I think we have time for one more. Thank you guys for the questions tonight. We've got a load of questions in there. They're great questions. Uh, Roko Makusko, I hope I pronounced that right, bro, on chat says, Andrew, how do you keep your Thanksgiving and praise from sounding repetitive and, mon and monotonous? <laughs> what ways do you keep your praise to God creative and fruitful? Well, one of the things I do, I pray in tongues because I believe when I'm praying in tongues, I'm, I'm giving thanks well. I'm yeah. worshiping Him in a heavenly language. So I pray in tongues a lot. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, what's wrong with being repetitive? Do you ever get tired of your child saying, I love you? Right? <laughs> wow. You know, I was thinking about this today. I was out walking and I was just praising God for everything. And I was like, God, what else do I say? And it's, mm -hmm. I just felt like, it, that's enough. Just mm -hmm. the fact that you even try. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like your little kid. They come and they draw a picture mm -hmm. for you and it looks terrible. Mm -hmm. But they bring it to you and you say, oh, mm -hmm. that's beautiful. Not mm -hmm. because it's beautiful, but because they're mm -hmm. trying to express themselves sure. and they did something for you. Yeah. And I think God's like that. None of us praise God as good as we should. Yeah, that's true. But God sees our heart. And if you really love Him and if you're just trying to say, Father, I'm I love you and I thank you. I believe that that blesses him. I don't care how many times you say mm -hmm. Yeah, agreed. All the time. Yeah. Let's try and take one more. Yeah, let's do one more. Um, Samaya says, how do, you tell a, uh, how do you tell a complainer or a woe is me, stop it, without sounding sympathetic about their complaint? At what point should one separate? <laughs> 